my tank of hydroponic zucchinis. After the initial nutrient solution level has dropped about halfway, it would be tremendously convenient if I could maintain a constant solution level by just placing a dipstick float valve in the tank. The same holds true for my tank of hydroponic zinnia flowers and hydroponic lettuce. The dipstick could connect to a one half inch poly pipe by one quarter inch tubing which would be supplied with nutrient solution from this elevated tank. The tank would be automatically filled with water by this float valve and hydroponic fertilizer could be added to the tank as needed. Here is how it would work. Plants would be transplanted into a tank of nutrient solution. The nutrient solution level would recede as the plant grows. When the nutrient solution had dropped about halfway, a dipstick float valve would be inserted into the tank and would continue to water and fertilize the plant until the end of the crop. Growing long-term crops would become a lot easier. The inside of the float valve would contain a buoyant device that would rise as the solution level rises. Push it down and it pops right back up. It's kind of fun. The top of the device is covered with one quarter inch sponge neoprene which pushes against the nozzle supplying the nutrient solution and stops the flow. Let's briefly discuss some of the materials that will be used to make these float valves. A lightweight 3 quarter inch PVC pipe was used to make the body of the float valve. There are lingering questions about the food safety of PVC pipe, so eventually I want to replace these with safer plastics like polyethylene and polypropylene. A button dripper will be used as a nozzle. It will conveniently fit inside of the float valve. A button dripper has a barbed fitting for the inlet tubing. And it has a small outlet fitting which will serve as a nozzle for our float valve. A 1 16th inch drill bit fits inside of the nozzle opening. But a 5 64th inch drill bit is too large for the opening. Therefore, we can estimate that the nozzle diameter is about 0.07 inches or 0.18 centimeters. The smaller the nozzle diameter, the less buoyant force that will be needed to stop the liquid flow. However, small diameter nozzles are more easily plugged by solid debris in the solution. One quarter inch polyethylene tubing is used to connect the float valve to the nutrient solution source. The button dripper is inserted into the polyethylene tubing. Button drippers may be wrapped with duct tape to make them fit more snugly in the float valve. A centrifuge tube could act as a buoyant force and will fit nicely inside of a float valve. They look pretty neat so I bought a whole bag of them. Another option would be this 10 milliliter plastic tube. The centrifuge tubes are taller than the plastic tubes and hold 50% more capacity. One inch thick extruded polystyrene is a very buoyant material. It may be cut into a shape that will fit inside of the float valve and provide the buoyant force needed to stop the nutrient solution flow. One quarter inch thick sponge neoprene has a sticky side so it may be glued to the buoyant material. Buoyant force pushes the material against the nozzle and stops the nutrient solution flow. Some light gauge wire is also needed, and we'll talk more about that later. And finally, this twist tie material would be good to place in the bottom of the float valve as a means to prevent the float apparatus from falling out. It's time to make some working models of these float valves. As a starting point, let's take a brief look at the bottle model float valve that was shown in a previous YouTube. It resembles a dipstick float valve, but its body has a larger diameter. The first float valve model will also have an end cap with a hole drilled in it. The polyethylene tubing and button dripper are threaded through and snugged up. End caps are available both as a domed and a flatter top design. I prefer the flatter top design. The float valve body is inserted into the end cap. It doesn't need to be glued. The one quarter inch sponge neoprene will be attached to the cap of the centrifuge tube. 
The sponge neoprene is spongy. What a surprise. About a three quarter inch square is cut out with a scissors. The paper is peeled off. This is sticky stuff. The sponge neoprene will be positioned and then pressed on the cap. The material hanging over the edge of the cap was trimmed off. Here is the centrifuge tube with the attached sponge neoprene. It weighs 7 grams. The tube will be placed in this graduate cylinder containing 70 milliliters of water to learn information about its displacement and flotation characteristics. The tube was placed in the graduate cylinder and the water level rose to 77 milliliters. So the 7 gram tube displaced 7 milliliters of water. When the tube was totally immersed, it displaced 24 milliliters of water, which means the tube has the capability to apply up to 17 grams of force against the button dripper. The tube is placed into the float valve body, and the twist tie is inserted. Probably something a little bit wider like a ribbon would work better than a twist tie. The tubing is connected to a water supply. The water supply is elevated about 20 inches above the bottom of the tank. It works! The float valve is maintaining about a 4.5 inch level of water. The tube was immersed down to about the 9 milliliter mark on the tube. This model has a nice finished look and the materials to make it only cost about two dollars. Let's shift our attention now to some open pipe models that do not have an end cap. Two wires will be inserted into the pipe to act as a back support for the button dripper. Two sets of holes are drilled on the front and back of the pipe. Then the wire is inserted through the front and back of one set of holes and then through the other set of holes. Pliers are then used to tighten up the wire. The one quarter inch tubing and button dripper assembly is threaded through the pipe. As you can see, the wires provide support and prevent the button dripper from being pulled out of the pipe. Now we will build a seven inch float valve model. The wires have already been installed in the pipe. The one quarter inch tubing and button dripper assembly is pulled through and snugged up. The centrifuge tube is placed in the pipe and the twist tie wire is inserted and tied up. And it's ready to go. To connect to a water source like this juice bottle, just insert the tubing into a slightly undersized hole. No fittings are needed and it's a nice tight fit. Here's the final product. Let's see if it works. A full juice bottle is about 21 inches above ground level. The float valve is maintaining about a 4 inch water level and that is similar to the performance of the previous model. A 4 inch water level indicates that the centrifuge tube was immersed to about the 10 milliliter mark. If the support wires were placed 3 quarters of an inch lower, this float valve could possibly maintain a three and a quarter inch water level. What if you wish to maintain the nutrient solution level in this deeper tank of zinnias? The previous two float valve models would simply be too short. Well then, just build a longer float valve model to accommodate the tank. Here's a top view of a 15 inch float valve model. It's holding about a four inch level of water. A four inch water level indicates that the centrifuge tube was immersed to the 13 or 14 milliliter level, so it was nearly out of capacity. If you wanted to maintain a six inch water level, a reasonable approach would be to place the support wires two inches higher. The water level in the supply tank was about 32 inches above ground level. This was about a foot higher than the two previous trials and this generated about an additional 0.4 psi of water pressure which requires more force to stop the water flow and 
causes the centrifuge tube to sink deeper so that it can develop more counterforce. For this reason, I recommend water tank elevations of two feet or less for these float valves. Open pipe models do not require an end cap which adds 82 cents to the cost of a float valve. And that brings the cost of a seven inch float valve to below a dollar and a quarter. But the 15 inch float valve will cost an extra quarter for the increased pipe length. Suppose you only want to maintain a two inch solution depth, then what? The good news is that I have already developed several models that can do this. But details of these float valves and other information will be given in part two of dipstick float valves for watering plants. Mm -hmm.